when you talk about nuclear chemistry, I, I guess you start with Wilhelm Röntgen. He's the guy who discovered X-rays. And there was Henry Becquerel. He found that uranium ore is emit radiation, and that radiation can pass through those X-rays and affect photographic plates. But then Becquerel worked with the Curies, Marie, Pierre, to understand radioactivity. From there, it all kind of shot off. They found that radioactivity is the breakdown of atomic nuclei. As it happens, there's a release of some form of radiation. They called it radioactive decay. And they came up with half-life. Time required for half of some radioactive sample to decay. And then there were nuclides. Isotopes of elements identified by number of protons and neutrons. So they said there was a decay series. The sequence of nuclides that an element changes into before forming a stable nucleus. With that came radioactive dating, using half-life to find the age of something. Carbon for organic things and uranium for rocks. How old are you? How old am I? And there was fission and fusion. Fission was large nuclei breaking down into pieces of the same mass. They couldn't hold a candle. The fusion, where two or more light nuclei blend to form one or more larger nuclei. When they had fusion, they had war. So we got three types of radiation, alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. Me, I'm none of them, but anyway. Please allow me to introduce myself, I'm a man of wealth and taste. I've been around for a long, long year, stole many a man's soul and faith. I was around when you... So here's the deal. Alpha particles are about the same as a helium nucleus. You know, with a mass of four atomic units, well, alpha particles travel about one-tenth the speed of light. So that means they're the easiest kind of particle to stop. But nothing special. Cool. So, you want a beta particle? It's a high-speed electron, negatively charged, a mass of 0 0.005 atomic units. Travels pretty close to the speed of light. Well, kiddo, you need aluminum to stop a beta. Far more dangerous than an alpha. Gamma rays are extremely high energy light with no mass. They are the most penetrating. You need lots of lead to stop them. Gamma rays can cause severe damage. There are four basic variables in any half-life problem. Total time, half-life, starting amount, and ending amount. This is the basic equation for a first-order reaction. This is its graph. This is the graph for a second-order reaction. And here is its equation. Well, what are the symbols? Do you want me to show you? This is alpha, this is beta, this is a neutron, this is a positron. A positron is a positively charged electron.
Certain values of protons and neutrons in the nucleus are stable, but a nucleus can be unstable for three reasons. It can have too many protons compared to neutrons, which you solve by changing a proton into a neutron and a positron. That's called positron decay. Well, the nucleus can have too many neutrons compared to protons, in which case you change a neutron into a proton and a negative beta particle. It's called beta decay. The third problem is that the nucleus is simply too big, in which case you lose two neutrons and two protons. It's called alpha decay, and it forms a stable nucleus. And it's such an unstable world, instability of joy. So, y'all want to know about the uses of radioactivity? Okay, I can give it to you. See, in every living thing, there's a common ratio of, uh, of normal C12 and radioactive C14. And what you do is, you gotta calculate the time needed to change from what is expected to what is actually found. See, then there are radioisotopes. So lots of substances can be radioactive and then followed throughout the body. Even cooler are fission reactors. See, nuclear reactors, they use fission reactors to produce heat, which is then used to turn water into steam. And those drive turbines that produce electricity. <clears throat> Lastly, you got the, uh, the sun and stars. See, they're powered by fusion. And this, of course, related to the in fact, the most abundant element in the universe is hydrogen, followed by helium. So ain't it funny? Helium is the uh, second most abundant element in the universe, and yet we here on Earth are running out of it. Ain't that funny? U-235 is fissionable, which basically means it can be bombarded by neutrons and it'll split. But the fact that these splitting nucleus can emit neutrons, it can split other nuclei, that's the basis for the chain reaction. I mean, f fusion in the sun, it involves several steps, but basically they go down to four hydrogens, creating an alpha particle, two positrons, and energy. But thermonuclear devices, they use isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. Do the same kind of thing. And then you have energy mass conversion. Einstein stuff. Einstein's famous equation. Energy equals mass defect times constant squared. And of course, I mean, the, that's the basis for explaining where the energy associated with nuclear changes comes from. When a nuclear change occurs, the mass of the products is slightly less than the mass of the reactants. And that loss is the mass defect. I mean, one kilogram of mass being converted into energy is equal to burning three billion kilograms of coal. It's amazing. So, uh, during beta decay, you, know, you want to know what happens. Now, well, one neutron changes into one proton and one negative beta particle. You know, the atomic number increases uh, by one due to the new proton and the mass number is unchanged. You know, a neutron is gone. Yeah, well, to, to main electrical neutrality, a negative beta particle is also formed. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, during during positron decay, you know, one, one proton changes into one neutron, and one uh, a, a positron particle. Yeah. The, the the atomic number decreases by one due to the loss of a proton. Now, since it changed into a neutron, the mass number is unchanged. 
you know, once a nucleus decays, the daughter is still is it's often unstable as well. This is like like Freud would have talked about the daughter isotope, of course. Many decays occur before a stable nucleus even formed. You know what I'm saying? What about the latency period? I don't know. A classic example of that is U-238, you know, uranium. But uh, the case through 14 steps into a stable lead 206. But each step has a characteristic decay particle and half-life. This characteristic decay series is the method used to verify the identity of newly formed atoms, right? But I mean the fact that daughter products can be even more radioactive than the parent isotope adds to the problem of nuclear waste and the storage of the poison. If the problems there, and the problems, uh, you know, with the parents not, you know, not being as good as the, as the kids. It's not like it is every year. I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's the radioactive decay series. So. I don't know what else it'd say. Yeah, and that pretty much, you know, sums up nuclear chemistry for you. Now, what about the effects? I don't know if we fully talked about the effects. Well, there's somatic damage, which is to the person themselves, the organism themselves, who is affected by the radiation. But there's also genetic damage, which is something that they're going to pass on to their offspring. You know? um, now, the biological effects of a particular source depend on these factors. Energy of the radiation, you know, higher the energy, the more reds. What's it going to be? The penetrating ability of the radiation? You know, alphas, not so bad. Betas, a little worse. Gammas, done. The ionizing ability of the radiation, that's, uh, that's an important part, because, you know, gamma rays penetrate very deeply, but cause only occasional ionization, so don't worry about the ionization. Um, but alpha particles, not very penetrating, very effective in causing ionization, and they produce a dense trail of damage. Um, so if you ingest an alpha particle producer like plutonium, it can be damaging. Because you know, of that ionization. Um, and the chemical properties of the radiation source are also important. You know, when a radioactive nuclide is ingested, its effectiveness at causing damage depends on its residence time. You know, krypton, strontium, they're both beta particle producers. But krypton is chemically inert, it passes through the body quickly, doesn't have much time to do damage. Strontium is just you know, similar to calcium, you collect in bones, and that's why it's work. It may cause leukemia, bone cancer. But, talking about nuclear chemistry, that's it.